Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I am checking my volume. Sorry Mr. B, checking my volume, make sure everything's right. So I saw this going around this morning. Look, turns out I think this, Chides, this Chad uh, Stein grabber had uh, found this. 21 shares, is, I think is the name of a company, um, that has a, an XRP ETP, Exchange Traded Product, that allows exposure to the asset without directly owning the underlying asset is kept in cold storage and is not traded in public markets and here's the screenshots and this gets pretty interesting because folks for years we've been showing you what didn't make sense all these people that kept bitcoin ethereum bitcoin ethereum and they had people in the media and in the crypto media that were touting that same thing and these are not dumb people i've told you a thousand times these are not dumb people, they're, and they're trying to act like they don't understand XRP, and they just don't get it. And I knew on the face of it that they weren't being honest, okay? And we can prove it, too. But I went, and when I saw this going around, I went to find the actual website, and it's it's for real. It's 21shares.com, okay? Uh, AXRP 21 shares, Ripple XRP ETP. They even got the net asset value of $18, okay? And then I saw Cowboy Crypto's tweet. It says, not, uh, not only is Pomp invested in Anthony Pompliano, folks. This is the same guy that just, he just can't seem to figure out XRP, but he can, right? Um, he he, he um, thinks that selling Bitcoin pizzas is a great idea, but he just can't figure out why anybody would think XRP might be. You just can't figure it out. Doesn't understand it, right? So turns out he's actually invested in this thing. It's a Kathy, uh, uh, Kathy Wood, who's the Bitcoin Max you see all over CNBC. Um, I don't know who that is. Let me go, let me go back, back down. Anthony Pompliano is invested in this thing. Kathy Woods invested in this thing, and Morgan Creek, who is the other guy, Mark Yusko, who used to be, um, Mark Yusko, who's also the guy that said, oh, well, I'll look a little further into XRP. I just, I'm just, I just can't quite, I don't quite get it. But they're invested into this 21 shares, which is, um, it has got an XRP ETP. And then you'll, you'll remember this was going around this morning too from Riz XRP. You might remember this classic, the Brad uh, Garlinghouse meme where he makes the funny face. This is also Anthony Pompliano playing like, oh, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. But he's talking about, I just don't get why you'd think that, that the CC, or no, I can't say that. Why that country that starts with a China might have some control over Bitcoin laid by the Chinese Communist Party. Let's not pretend that if the Chinese Communist Party wants to provide control or oversight in some way of these concentrated miners in China, like it's not, that's not realistic. And again, I'm not necessarily even saying, let's just acknowledge it and let's decide, okay, does it matter? Is it critical? Let, let's, let's not pretend it's not there. Let's acknowledge it's there. And like, well, what but, but hold on a second. So there's a difference though between could they exert influence over miners that are a minority part of the network, right? Versus- oh, not a minority. Of course they are. There's, there's nobody who's got 50 plus percent control. Four miners in China have well over 50% control. But that's 200%. No, sorry, the, the, the combination of four miners have over 50% control. Yeah, well, no, no they, they've got over 50% of the mining hash power, but they don't have control of Bitcoin, right? It's not like the Chinese Communist Party can change anything or do anything. They, there are miners, well, of If course. you control a majority of the hash power, the miners are the masters. If you control a majority of the hash power, you know, we have seen 51% attacks on other blockchains. If the Chinese Communist Party, I mean, if what you're saying is you don't think the Chinese Communist Party could go it to those four miners and say, hey, you need to do X, Y, and Z, I mean, I would, I'll ask you, is that, is that the position that you're... Well, you're 
I, I'm trying to understand what your argument is in terms of you're saying that the Chinese Communist Party has the ability to essentially 51 percent attack the Bitcoin network. One well, for sure they do. Oh, I, I disagree with that for sure. Well, right, hold on. It, so, wait, wait, wait. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Put, put a pin. Hold on. Pause. He's putting a pin in it because he knows he's getting put in a in a corner here. <laughs> we, you, I know you well enough, and I think you know me well enough. We're not going to change each other's mind on this. So just put a pin in that one. Okay. Well, let, let me ask two questions. Okay. Do you think the Chinese Communist Party could, if they wanted to, control those four miners? No. <laughs> what? A, what? A, I mean, you're talking about being intellectually dishonest, but I'll show you some more intellectual dishonesty from Pomp. He's always acted like he doesn't understand XR. He just doesn't get it, right? Um, this was when the lawsuit dropped on Ripple. Good morning to everyone except the people that thought they could sell unregistered securities and get away with it. All right, that was him on that. But this was him. Remember how I've told you on this channel that in somewhere in, in 2017, towards the end of 2017, everybody, remember CNBC was, te they, were, they were teaching their audience how to sell XRP. Anthony Pompliano was on the August 31st of 2017 was saying, if you think Bitcoin went on a tear once CNBC and institutional investors learned about it, just wait until they discover Ripple, XRP. So Pomp knew exactly, but somewhere in 2017, all of the, the media machine, him, the crypto media machine, which is, includes him, all of him and his friends, all of a sudden, they just don't get it. All of a sudden, CNBC, they, CNBC stops talking about it and doesn't, and stops te teaching people, their audience how to buy it because they know of its value. They know. All of a sudden, lawsuits start dropping. Within a year or two, the SEC drops the lawsuit. All of a sudden, all we hear about is Bitcoin and Ethereum from late 2017 on. It's all been, uh, it's all been intentional, folks. These, this, these are some, these are some bad hombres. I'm not naming names when I say bad hombres, but these are people that were working a plan. We watched it. Coin Center. These are people that were working a plan. A coin Center, Mr. Huber is pointing it out right here. Hey, Coin Center, I wanted to rewatch your video on the filing of the Ripple XRP lawsuit in de December 2020, where you expressed your joy about the lawsuit. It looks like you deleted it from your YouTube channel, though it had multiple uh, a multiple of views you usually get. Any chance you could re-upload the video? I'd like to watch it too. All intentional, folks. Folks, it was a plan. Ripple on-chain data shows that XRP whales have purchased around 11 million XRP over the past week with roughly $6.82 million. I like the sound of that. This is Anna Manuel, who is on Ripple's board. On the U.S. side, what do we have? I mean, if we had national champions in the U.S., which we don't, of course, Ripple would be it. You know, we could be on the really positive side of this as we start gaining traction. As And I don't have to tell you all because you work here and you help make this happen every single day. But we are designed as capable of disrupting illicit transactions. We do full AML, IC. We can counter corruption in developing countries because... Instead of sending cash, people are sending things, assets digitally. We're helping with financial inclusion, all of that while safeguarding um, privacy. And what's stopping us in the U.S., I think through no malicious intent, but if you look at the maze of people who regulate people like us, fintech companies, banks, et cetera, cryptocurrencies, it's very unclear. There's an alphabet soup of U.S. regulators working with this none of them coordinating very well and most of them not very well versed in these new technologies or um understanding of this global reality that sandy and i just laid out yep it's a lot more intentional than she laid out there though and then here's another question for christine lagarde about that she's being asked about bricks this is from that mit um the mit uh conference there there at MIT recently I think Bonjour. Samy from University of Liège and um, 
in the university we had a debate with uh, the director of the BNB uh, about the BRICS and how uh, they influence the world today. And now I would like to know how you perceive them. Do you perceive them as competitors, a threat, or as partners? And what would happen if, I know it's difficult, but if they manage to build the central bank like we have it here in the ECB and maybe also have a common currency, will it be a danger for Europe? Well, thank you very much for taking us uh, beyond uh, our borders. And for, for all of you, BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Think for a second about what these countries really have in common in terms of demographics, in terms of geopolitical alliance, in terms of history and background, and ask yourself whether they have enough in common to actually volunteer their currency to something that would be jointly organized, care for, and used in the future. I think that's my way of addressing your question. A common currency cannot be just um, something nice to have that you decide on the flight. It's far more um, important and, and it's an expression of your sovereignty and you really have to have something bigger than that, something that brings countries together. So, um, you know, of course, there, there are discussions and there, there are common interests, but I don't think that there is that, that sort of strong foundation of collective sovereignty that would deliver this single currency that they could uh, that they could envisage. You know, they, they, they did set up an international uh, bank some, I would say, probably about eight to ten years ago. It, I don't think that it has uh, generated much uh, by way of even projects. Um, there is, an, there is an Asian investment bank, there are some development banks that are very active and very efficient, but in terms of having a, actually a central bank that, that manages monetary policy in all these countries and looks after the currency, I'm not so sure. Ah, she seems a little cocky, almost like she's got a plan. And this guy's talking about uh, the ETFs coming. Well, I think that ETFs will continue to sort of overwhelm other structures. Everything in liquid assets will move to the ETF, ETP structure. Um, so I think the areas that are most important are the U.S. and Europe. And Europe because of usage, which allows you to go to really the rest of the world. And so I think we'll, we will continue to move into every market around the world because it's just where all the energy is not just for the consumer experience but the largest asset managers in the world are all heavily focused on the wrapper itself okay, well so i think that, that guy, etfs will can that guy right there's the founder of wisdom tree um now this is this is great stuff right here i want to want you to hear this this guy explains fractional he's probably a bitcoin guy He's, talk, he's on Joe Rogan show. He's talking about fractional reserve banking. He's, he's, he's explaining it in three minutes. Great, great. This is three minutes worth your time because when I go into the member group at DAIXRP.com, we're going to show you how the Federal Reserve really happened and show you something you've probably never seen before. So it's, it's even, it's, it's much more nefarious even than what he just described. So I'm going to show you a video that, about how this Federal Reserve came about in DAIXRP.com. And, but I'm also, I'm going to show you what I thought was a shocking clip, like major shocking clip um, at, at the end of it. But we're going to, look folks, we are surround, I mean, for the last I'm just dumbfounded by what we've seen in the last five years. We're surrounded by deception, lies, and it's coming out of our government, out of our media. They're trying to censor us. All the things I'm showing today, or most of the stuff I'm showing today in the private group is is things I couldn't show out here because, because I would be censored or my channel would be turned off. That's the reason I did it. 
So go to DAIXRP. It, it, you know, Ethgate was just, I consider that our, one of the battles on, on, on the battlefield that is a much larger war. And make no mistake, digital currency has everything to do with all of the lies and misinformation and the psyops that we're seeing every day of our lives going on right now. It has everything to do with it. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Come to DAIXRP.com and we're here we go.